Dit is St. Paul's Chapel. Hier vlakbij lagen de World Trade Torens. En op de dag van de aanslagen van Al-Qaeda was hier priester Milton Williams. Hij maakt die hele dag mee en probeert mensen te redden die onder het puin liggen. We komen met elkaar in contact, ik maak een reportage met hem. En sinds die tijd zijn we al 23 jaar bevriend. Een gesprek met priester Milton Williams over Kamala Harris en Donald Trump. Over de enorme spanningen, ook in zijn gemeenschap, in zijn kerk. En over het geld dat zo'n grote invloed heeft op deze presidentsverkiezingen. When the Twin Towers uh, collapsed, St. Paul's, this chapel here, one of the oldest continuing congregations in uh, the city of New York, um, was where many of the first responders came, the police, the fire, um, and others came for respite, for care. Um, uh, it was just where people found a safe place to be. And the mere fact that it survived, I mean, with the Twin Towers just a half a block away, remember both towers being a half mile tall, if they had topped over in any way, this building, this building would not be here. Miracle in itself. It, we in look? itself. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. All right. So the towers collapsed. I then, um, let me see how I can remember this. The towers collapsed. I was first here in front of the church when the first tower, when the first tower collapsed. By the force and the pressure of it. I was forced under, in between two cars on the on the pavement on the Could ground. Could you feel the wave of? It was just it was just everything just went black. Everything just went out. Everything went solid black. Um, I always always carry a handkerchief, and I remember keeping the handkerchief in my pocket because I could feel all the dust going breathing breathing it in. So I remember putting the handkerchief over my face so I could just simply breathe. Boom. Can you describe to me what, what it felt like, what you saw? I, I'd say the closest I can imagine. If you can imagine there being taken a, a, a hurricane, a typhoon, a tornado, putting it in a small pa paper bag, small paper bag, and just shaking it all up vigorously. <laughs> That's what it was like. I mean, look at the sky. I mean, it's, it's almost identical to that, what it was on, on that September 11 morning uh, before the towers collapsed. I mean, right now you can see a bit of feathering in the clouds, yep. but on that day there was, not, there was nothing. It was just solid, just perfect blue. And I don't think we fully appreciate the amount of trauma that is now inside of us. You never, you never get over the trauma. It's always there. Did you get over it? I'm, <laughs> you can't, I can't. Mm. I mean, to the point, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not able to watch any documentary on television about it. I mean, just standing here right now is, I mean, you hear what, 20, 23 years, 23 years later. Yeah. yeah. 23 years later, just, uh, it's inside of, you can't, it, it's inside of you. Yeah. You will die with it. For sure, yeah. You will die with it. Shall we walk to the memorial? Let's go. So Milton, this location here, 9-11, the place of great trauma and anxiety. How is the mood of the country now? For example, the people in your parish, in, in your church, is there again anxiety about what will happen? Interesting you should ask that question about the level of anxiety. I mean, there was great anxiety obviously coming out of the trauma, the disaster, uh, the attack on us here in these United States in this place. From, obviously from an enemy from without, from another country, from from another continent coming in. Al-Qaeda. Yeah, Al Al-Qaeda. Yeah. To infiltrate us here right. and to create unspeakable, just unfathomable destruction and mass murder. The enemy from without. And now we are hearing rhetoric from the former president, Trump, whose 
using that same language of the enemy, but this time the enemy, he says, is from within. I mean, I mean can you just imagine, for those of us who have a sense of consciousness, what that does to the psyche, what that does to the soul, to think that there's someone, there's something inside that could create that kind of destruction. Like what happened here? Well, you know, the enemy. The <laughs> so, enemy, yeah. So, yeah so, so then your mind begins, so what does the enemy look like? Yeah. And you they see. are pointing fingers to Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. And anyone else, not just Democrats, but anyone else who speaks in opposition to his position, to the place where he stands. Yes. These but, are the words that you would hear from an autocrat. These are the words you would hear from an autocrat as a way of instoking fear, right. fear. I mean, why, if I, I, I find it difficult to understand why, yes, well, you know what, I do understand why people would want to promote fear because that's, that's a way of control and the use of power. Because when people are afraid, when they perceive that they are under attack, they are most vulnerable and then when people are most vulnerable, that's the place where they're most easily manipulated, used. Are you anxious about election day and everything that could follow after it? Because in your mind must be also the scenes of the Capitol on 6, January 6, uh, 2021. Yeah. The storming of the Capitol. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there is. I, I bear my own anger anxiety and my own, my own fear. Less about for my safety, but for my country. For the, for this, you know, it's never just about the United States. Let's be very clear about that. Because what we see happening here is a reflection of what's happening globally. So let's, we need to be very clear about that. Is there anxiety? Yes. Could it happen again? Yes. Does that make me anxious or afraid? Sad, hurt. Can you tell me what is happening in your church? How big is the division between the people that are sitting in, um, in these benches listening to you on Sunday? Well, if you're, if you're asking the division between those who are voting on the left and those who are voting the right, the Democrats and Republicans. Trump-Harris people, yeah. Trump-Harris people. You know, the truth of the matter is nobody really knows because we are living in a time and a place where people are afraid. People are even, they're afraid to have the conversations. You don't talk about it. First of all, remember, it's the South. So there's a lot of things we don't talk about ah. first. Uh -huh. But in this time, seriously, people are not having those conversations. What are the people standing in line for here? They are standing in line. The church offers a free meal around lunchtime for people in the city who are in need. So they just come, the church prepares the food, yep. and, and you stand in line and you're given a free meal yep. at lunchtime. It is a severe struggle in this country for many people, right? Uh, it is, and, and nobody would argue that. I don't think any, any politician, left, right, center, would argue. We're, we're struggling for some difficult times right now. So this is, this is necessary, the free food for it people is, here. It is, it, it helps. For some, it may be their only meal that they get, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's where we are. So this is a church where you worked for nine years, smack in the middle in, of Lower Manhattan, Wall Street, everything yeah. is happening here. Right here. When you're standing at the altar in the church, celebrating the sacred mysteries in the Mass, when you're standing at the altar in the church, you're looking straight down Wall Street. The straight epicenter down. of money. The epicenter of money. Yeah. It's like I, we, we, would always, we often said when I was here, is where the sacred is meeting joined with the secular, yeah. where God and money, right here. I don't think you'll find that in any other major city in the world, not, not in London, I in its financial district. Je Jesus thought it was a very bad combination, uh, God and money. No, what you do with your money <laughs> makes, can make it a bad combination. I thought he threw out the money man in the church. Well, ask why. Okay, he, he, why? he was throwing out the money changers. They threw out the money changers in the church because they were selling things in the church. They were taking advantage of the people who needed to buy sacrifices to make their offerings in the church. Right. That's I'm, why. I'm asking you because this presidential election, 
is the most costly ever. Uh, word has it that Kamala Harris has a one and a half billion dollars to campaign. Yes. Is it only about money, this whole game? We have created a system or we support a system that I don't think anybody would say it's right or fair or even just. It is what is now. Does it make it right? Can it be better? Sure. Is it perverse? Some would say it is, and I wouldn't be too far from saying, yes, it is. It can't be right. I mean, we're talking about people's lives here. I mean, the amount of money and the investment. See, the issue for me is the financial investment people are making to promote their own agenda. And, buy and, I think, and, and buying buy power. power. And buying Elon power. Elon Musk is literally buying power. Yeah, you can say that. He created the first major American car company in generations, and his rocket company is the only reason we can now send American astronauts into space. Come here. Take over, Elon. Yes, take over. Hi, everyone. <laughs> As you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm not just MAGA, I'm dark MAGA. Um, well, first of all, I, I want to say what an honor it is to, to be here. And, uh, you know, the, the, the true test of someone's character is how they behave under fire. And we, we, we had one president who couldn't climb a flight of stairs and another who was fist pumping after getting shot. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Blood coming down the face. Milton, over there is your church, a church where you worked for nine years, Trinity Church. But here is Federal Hall and George Washington. And you wanted to go here for our conversation, why? Yes, because first, you can't talk about the history of the United States without standing here. Because it is here that George Washington, the very first president of the United States, was inaugurated as the first president of the United States in 1789. So, where the first president was inaugurated, George Washington, as we stand on the threshold, of electing another president of the United States. And I think it's really important that we really meditate, we really give serious thought to what, what the intention of this country, the founding fathers, we like to say, of this, of this nation. What was their intent for us? And to think about where are we now? You know, I'm not a politician, I'm a priest, I'm a theologian. I think this is really a question about who who do we claim to be our identity, our heart, our soul, our spirit of this nation? And we need to ask ourselves, who do we claim to be? This is not just about one person being elected, but the heart, as we stand here with Trinity Wall Street right here, the sacred, and Wall Street, the financial market, right here, the secular. Who are we as a nation? He fought for freedom. What I hear from you is that there's now, there's always hope in this country, but this time it's a mix of hope and fear. It is, it is. I mean, and I would want to say that the fear, maybe the fear will ground us better in hope, huh? <laughs> maybe, maybe, if we choose. Right. Maybe the fear will, will urge us on to greater hope for what this place can be. Did you make your choice already? Did you vote already? I did, I voted last week and I voted for Kamala Harris, I did. I voted for Kamala Harris because understanding my values, I believe she, she represents those things that are most dear to me. My value system, relationships. How do we stay in relationship with each other as a nation? It's not just about the United States. How do we maintain our relationships with our other part, our global partners? With Europe, for example. I mean, there's a war going on right now in Ukraine. I mean, who do I, who do I believe 
will help to, to bring about a greater sense of unity, not just here in these United States, but globally. I mean, that's important. That really is. So I cast my vote for her. Good luck and thanks a million for your time. Oh, you're most welcome. Pleasure.